Today we will have a look at two encrypted postcards. Right now I'm on vacation this week and the next week and I thought we could have some fun with encrypted postcards. And since Klaus Schmee, who is a friend of this YouTube channel, posted two interesting postcards and there are still two other postcards left for the next week, probably, I thought we will have a look at these postcards. And today we have a look at the first two postcards. I'm right here now in Klaus Schmee's blog and as you can see you have here pictures of the postcards. And the first encrypted postcard Klaus found was from Cutley or Chutley. And as you can see here, I think I should scroll up a little, as you can see here we have some encrypted text on that postcard. And then we have a second postcard from Hornsey. And here you can see we have a lot of encrypted text on this postcard. These postcards, by the way, have been already broken. I was the first one that broke this postcard here after Klaus uh, posted it on his blog. And the first postcard here with the smaller text was broken by another reader of uh, Klaus Schmee. And yeah, I thought it's interesting to have a look at these postcards right now using Cryptool 2. So let's go to Cryptool 2 and break the postcards. I'm here now in Cryptool 2 and I want to have a look at the first postcard. And the first postcard consists of text. So let's have a look at, and it's probably monoalphabetic substitution. So let's have a look at our monoalphabetic substitution analyzer. And I have a transcription of this postcard that I paste right now. And here we have the transcription of the first postcard. As you can see, it's a very short text, but luckily for us, we have spaces. And as we can also see, we have only a few letters. So this is probably monoalphabetic, as I said. And to automatically analyze this, we have to change some settings in the monoalphabetic substitution analyzer. So let's go to this. We have hill climbing and English. And since it's very short, I increase the size of restarts of the hill climber to 1000. We use spaces. We have spaces here. Yeah, and now let's just test it. And as we can see, Cryptool 2 only needs a few <laughs> seconds, three seconds to break this postcard. And we can see here, my own dearest boy, this probably will make the pair for album from your girl. And the interesting thing here with this postcard is that it is actually Caesar encrypted. So you see here we have an M and we have here an N. We have here a Y and here a Z. Then we have the P and the O, the X and the W and so on. And this means these, the distance between these letters is only one. So a shift by one, a Caesar cipher with a shift of one. And we can easily break also Caesar ciphers in a different way with Crypto 2 and that I also want to show you. And in the start center, we can go to, ah, here we have it, Caesar brute force analysis, monoalphabetic. And here we can also paste our ciphertext. Then we have to change the dictionary to English. And I think when I start this right now, we will not see a decrypted ciphertext here since the contains component here, this component searches for English words and it has to find five English words and then it will forward the decrypted text to this text output here. So what does this workspace do? It performs a brute force search by decrypting um, the given text here, the given cipher text with all possible shift values between one and 26. And then this contains component here searches for English words in all these deciphered or decrypted texts. And when we have more than five hits, it will forward this to the decrypted cipher text and to the found shift key. Maybe we can decrease this number to three and then maybe we can see the decipherment. Otherwise we will see all possible plain text here and we should see also the plain text in this text output. Let's just test it. Yeah, and as I said, <laughs> we don't see 
um, the text here. But when we scroll through these texts here, and here we can also see um, the correct text. So when you search or perform a brute force search with a Caesar cipher, then you have 25 texts that make no sense. And of course, you have one text that is your plain text here. And maybe we can reduce the contains component even further to two number of hits to find. I don't know which length the um, words have to be here. And oh, maybe we have to change it to ignore case and then we can leave three here. Let's test this. And yes, this works. So the problem here was that it was searching for case or it was using a case sensitive search, meaning uh, upper and lower case um, letters. And I change it now to ignore the case and then it also prints out here or returns our deciphered plain text. Yeah, and as I said, a Caesar cipher can be easily broken. And it's interesting that people used with postcards a Caesar cipher. Okay, let's go to our next postcard. And our next postcard is more interesting. And I first want to show you the uh, transcription. And here we have the transcription. So as you can see, we have a lot of digits. Then these digits are separated using dots. And sometimes we have dashes. And as I said, I broke this when Klaus Schmee released or um, published the postcards on his blog. And this was mid in the night. And I really, I, I tried to be really fast to decipher this. And actually this time I was the first one on his blog to decipher it. So <laughs> that's really nice. And Luckily for me, someone created a nice transcription and Klaus also posted this, so I didn't have to create the transcription as I had to do with the first post postcard. And as I said, we have dots here, we have digits, and we have da dashes. And I assumed, or I, I really early assumed, that these dashes here are separators between words, and that the dots are separated separators between um, the letters. And sometimes, as you can see here, for instance, we have some clear text words and we have an end symbol here. And the first thing I did, I removed the spaces that we do not need. So I said, find replace space by nothing. So we have, and not wrap around, and start from the beginning, space, and of course, replace by nothing. So I removed the spaces. And then I added some dots. So the problem with this plain text, uh, cipher text here right now is that our monoalphabetic substitution analyzer only works with single letters. So maybe in the future I will update this and will change this. But our homophonic substitution analyzer is able to work on um, more than one letter for a cipher text symbol. And that means I had to use the homophonic substitution analyzer as we will do in a few minutes. And the homophonic substitution analyzer can be set up in a way that it recognizes ciphertext symbols or separates ciphertext symbols using, for instance, dots. <laughs> we have here dots between the um, letters, but this would mean it would recognize this as a first ciphertext symbol, then this as a separator, and then it would take this 25-15 as the next one. But we assume that this 25 and this 15 here are separated or separate ciphertext symbols. So we have to add dots in front of the dash and after the dash. So I replace the dash by dot dash dot, replace all. And now we have some nice separations between the dashes here. But as you can see, we have some problems here. And the problem is that we have different dashes here. And that was really mean. So I replaced, no, I reverted this back. Then I replaced the longer dash with a shorter one from the beginning. And now I could replace all the usual dashes by dot dash dot, replace all. And now we can see we have a nicely formatted ciphertext. Every ciphertext symbol is uh, separated using dots and also the dashes are separated using dots. And now we can just copy this with Control C, go to Cryptool2 and in Cryptool2 search for the homophonic 
substitution analysis. And here we can paste now our ciphertext into the text input. Then we don't need this uh, string component here, string operations component, and we directly connect the text input with the homophonic substitution analyzer. Then we change the homophonic substitution analyzer. Uh, use spaces English this is correct, but we have to select text format symbol separated. And then for uh, the separator, we select the uh, full stop. That means it separates now the text using the full stops. When I press play now, we should see here, yes, you can see, and I increase the size here a little, we have here 13, 25, dash, 15, 23, 14, and so on. And now we can analyze the text. As I said, it, this is still a monoalphabetic substitution, but using the homophonic substitution analyzer, we are able to work on um, ciphertext symbols consisting of more than one letter. Now let's analyze this here and stop it. And we can instantly see here, this is English text that makes sense. So we mark something, for instance, that, as I said, the dashes are spaces. And then we have here my own dear Ada, the last something. And here, here's something that was interesting with the cipher. Uh, text, we have these clear text passages. And of course, it tries to decipher these, but we can just change these to the original ones. For instance, P, P, and C here. And for you at the... And let's go on. I think this is thanks. For mine, dear, have got honey, just all in gold. I feel rich, just for a bit, dear, have been down to C. And then here we have CC and TC. Change this just as placeholders here. Tonight, dear, has got is. This probably is for man's job, dear. Glad we are go. And here we have. <laughs> yeah, and this is, oh, this is interesting. This is wrong. So this here is also a space. I thought this is a, a the, but this is W. And this is street, ST probably, the street, but I changed it to just to S. Then we have this end here, and for the end, I just use an A. And then one, mm, lots of kisses for my own dearest Ada from, and then we have here your, probably I change this just to Y, own world. Yeah. And here's the decipherment. Okay, my own dear Ada, the last uh, um, picture postcard, I assume PPC for you at W Street, thanks for mine, dear, have got my money, dearest, all in gold. I feel rich just for a bit, dear, have been down to see, see, probably uh, town, T, town name, town, probably, tonight, dear, here's got, is, what do we have here, eight, I don't know, maybe this is, this, this is only one, Letter. Maybe this could be his foreman's job, dear. Glad we are going to W on Sunday, dear. Will be as soon as I can tomorrow. And here's a here's a typo. This is probably and should be an R. There's a an, an mistake in, or there happened a mistake during encipherment. Dearest, good night, dear. One, I don't know, must <laughs> love a lots of kisses for my own dearest Ada from your own world. So, as I said, with these um, ciphertexts, where we have two digits for a single ciphertext symbol, you can't use the monoalphabetic substitution analyzer, but you can use the homophonic substitution analyzer. And to use this and analyze, the text is quite easy.
And before doing so, you have to format the text a little as I did here. So you have to take care that you have separations between um, your ciphertext symbols. The nice thing with this ciphertext here, with this, with this encrypted postcard was that it already had the separations. It would be much more difficult if we would have only, for instance, um, such a postcard here without any separators. And these kind of um, ciphers we have, for instance, with Vatican ciphers. And this, of course, is much more difficult because before you can analyze this, then with the homophonic substitution analyzer in Crypt Tool 2, we have to tokenize this. But luckily for us, most of the postcards or the encrypted postcards that we see or have seen also on my YouTube channel are encrypted with ciphers where you can see the tokenization to these ciphertext symbols and this makes them quite easy to analyze yeah yeah and this is everything i wanted to do in this short video we have analyzed two encrypted postcards the first one with a caesar cipher the second one with a mono alphabetic substitution cipher both uh, we have broken using crypto 2 I hope you liked it. If yes, please give a thumbs up. Also, as always, if you did not yet subscribe to our channel, I would be really happy if you do so. This really helps me to grow the channel and to make Crypto 2 more popular. And by the way, if you have some ciphertexts you want to solve and you need help, and maybe I can make a nice video out of this, you can, of course, write an email to me and con or contact me below the video. So thank you very much for watching and see you in the next video.